Uh-oh, Brandon has missed too many lectures, and now the guy has problems with his professor. The man agrees to give the student a chance to redeem himself, but only if he fulfills a task the professor has for him. I'll give you one glass of milk and one glass of water. You'll need to pour the two liquids into a bowl. But you should be able to separate the milk from the water later. You can't use any kind of dividers. Brandon spent several hours mulling over the problem. But he was desperate enough to crack this riddle. What did he do? He poured all the water into a bowl and froze it. After that, he added the milk. One morning, Melissa saw that some money was missing from the wallet she had left on the table the night before. Her husband was on a business trip, so it must have been one of her sons who took the cash. Jason, who was 17, 15-year-old Jacob, or her youngest son, Andrew, he was 13. Melissa asked her sons what they had been doing the previous evening. Jason said, I felt unwell and had a headache. After dinner, I took a painkiller and went to bed right away. Jacob told his mom, My friend Eric stayed for dinner. After that, I gave him a lift home. And Andrew reminded Melissa he had had his basketball training. The woman immediately understood who had taken the money. Can you figure it out as well? Jacob was lying. He was only 15 years old and couldn't drive, legally. Detective Green was called to investigate an accident. A car crashed into a store window and smashed the glass. There are two suspects. Both of them deny causing the accident. Detective Green doesn't need much time to figure out who the culprit is. Do you know it too? It's the owner of the blue car. The pattern on its tires is the same as the one on the ground in front of the store. It was a busy Monday morning at the police station when a man rushed in. I was robbed on the way to the bank, he screamed. I was going there carrying a bag with a large sum of money. Suddenly a man wearing a black mask and a pair of gloves ran up to me. He snatched the bag and darted away. The police officer listened to the man and asked him about a fresh cut on his right cheek. The man replied it was left by a ring the criminal had been wearing. When the policeman heard these words, he immediately understood the man was lying. How did he realize that? The man said the robber had been wearing gloves. Then how could the ring scratch his cheek? You lose your friends in a crowd. You spend half an hour looking for them. And finally, here they are. What is the first thing you do as soon as you see them? You stop searching. Look at these two women and the teenager sitting on the floor. He seems to be absorbed in his smartphone. Can you figure out which woman is his mother? It's the woman on the left. Children often subconsciously sit facing their parents. The teenager and the woman also have the same hair color. Timothy and Laura were high school sweethearts. They got married shortly after college. So far, they've been together for 20 years and have two kids who don't live with them anymore. Unfortunately, the spouses have started to fight a lot recently. One day, they talk and decide to divorce. Both of them confess they've already found new partners on a dating site. Timothy says he's happy to have lots of common interests with his internet girlfriend. And Laura boasts that her new boyfriend understands her perfectly. One day, Timothy and Laura decide to meet their ideal partners in real life. Strangely, after this meeting, the couple calls off their divorce. Can you figure out why?
Timothy and Laura found out they were having an online relationship with each other. An old man decided to leave all the money he's been saving for his entire life to one of his three sons. But he couldn't choose which one should get the money. That's why the man gave each of them one coin. He asked his sons to buy something that would fill the largest room in their house. The oldest son bought some raw cotton, but it wasn't enough to fill the whole room. The middle son brought home some straw, and still there was some space left in the room. And the youngest son bought two cheap things that managed to fill the room right away. He ended up being the one to get his father's money. What did he bring home? The youngest son bought a box of matches and a candle. After he lit the candle, the room was instantly filled with light. Patrick shaves every day. But every morning, he finds his beard to be just as long as it was the day before. How come? Patrick is a barber. He shaves other people. Amanda was 21 on her last birthday, but she's going to be 23 on her next one. How is it possible? It's Amanda's 22nd birthday today. Helen was walking in the forest and got lost. After wandering hours to find her way back, she comes to a clearing. There, the woman sees three narrow paths. But one of them is blocked by huge, dense bushes with sharp thorns. The second is littered with trash and broken glass. And the third path is guarded by massive, scary-looking mantises. Uh Which road should Helen pick? The woman should choose the third path. Mantises might look terrifying, but they're totally harmless. A mad scientist caught Kevin and locked him in a small room. There were no windows, and the door was locked. But there was a note on the table. It was from the scientist. J-F-M-A-M-J-A-S-O-N-D. Guess the missing letter, and I'll set you free. In 10 minutes, Kevin was already running away from the strange place. He managed to figure out that the missing letter was J. Those were the first letters of the months of the year, from January to December. And the sixth letter, J, stood for June. Can you figure out what this rebus puzzle means? It's no biggie. No big E? Yeah. It's a fruit, it's tasty and sweet, and can give you a lot of energy. But you can also find it in your calendar. What is it? It's a date. Anna asked her colleague Daniel to give her a lift to the college where her daughter studied. She promised the girl to take her shopping that day. On their way there, Anna got an idea. How about a bet? I'll prepare one of your reports for you if you manage to figure out which girl is my daughter. Daniel was up for the challenge. When they arrived at the college, they saw three girls waiting at the gates. Daniel was confused. They all look similar. Can you figure out who Anna's daughter is? It's the girl on the left. Anna has the letter L tattooed on her wrist, and the girl is wearing a bracelet with the same letter. A teenager is walking along the street together with a car mechanic. The guy is the mechanic's son, but the mechanic isn't the boy's father. How is it possible? The car mechanic is the guy's mother. 
Two cars, silver and white, are moving along the same highway. The silver car is traveling at a speed that's twice higher than that of the white car. They both started at the same time. And still, after some time on the road, the two cars come across each other. How is it possible? The cars were moving toward each other. John and Michael are car mechanics. After finishing a tricky repair, they get out from under the car. John's face is all dirty, but Michael's face is miraculously clean. And still, it's Michael who goes and washes his face. Why? Michael looked at his colleague and thought his face was dirty too. Uh But when John saw Michael, whose face was spotless, he concluded he was just as clean. When do you keep moving when you see red, but stop once it's green? It always happens when you're eating a watermelon. Who is the only brother-in-law of your mother's brother? That's your father. One night, a group of thieves was stealing boxes with electronics from a warehouse. They were carrying them to their van when they heard a police car siren. But even though the thieves didn't manage to avoid the police, they didn't get arrested. Why? They started to carry the boxes back to the warehouse, and the police thought it was a late-night delivery. Ooh, that's kind of smart. Phantoms! And other fantastic creatures! Ah, you're not impressed. All your life you've been running a myth-busting blog. It's gotten pretty popular recently. Abandoned hospitals, creepy hotel rooms, haunted apartments, cursed houses! You spend a night in all of them and take a bunch of videos to prove that all those scary stories are nothing more than fairy tales. One day, one of your fans sends you a tip about a sinister dark castle located on a rocky cliff near the coast of a raging ocean. She says this place is the scariest in the world, but you're not intimidated easily. You grab your phone and head on over. Get ready to test your courage and resourcefulness. Count how many answers you get right, and find out what your score means at the end of the video. Since it's your first night, you decide to spend it in a small village. It's right by the scary castle. Usually, people can't wait to tell you how freaky this or that place is. But in this village, everyone keeps silent. You ask one of the residents to tell you something about the castle, but she responds with nothing. Did she not want to speak to you? No, that's not it. She's afraid of answering. How do you know that? I'll give you six seconds to figure it out. Look at her hand. It says run away on her forearm. To reach the castle, you first need to walk through a small forest. At the edge of it, you see three roads and three signs. The first sign shows a wolf, the second, a bear, and the third, a vampire. Which road should you choose? Uh You have five seconds. Quick, make a decision. You don't believe in vampires, remember? But bears and wolves, those are real. Besides, it's morning. And if vampires were real, they'd be steering clear of the sunlight. You make your way through the dense thickets of the forest and record what's happening on your phone. You notice a hut. Yeah, I bet a vampire lives here, you laugh to yourself. Ha ha! Still, you decide to check it out. Your readers love that kind of stuff. You go into the dark hut and turn on the light on your phone. Cobwebs cover everything. The curtains are drawn. Some candles are out on the table. Ooh, a key. You grab it and put it inside your pocket. Before leaving, you notice a large wooden box in the corner and hear snoring coming from inside. 
You're scared out of your mind right now. And just then, the snoring stops. A vampire climbs out of the box. Oh, this is bad. Maybe you can get away before it realizes what's going on. You try to get outside, but the door's locked. Oh, the key. Yes. No, it doesn't work. What should you do? Quick, you don't have much time. just open the curtains. If it really is a vampire, it should be afraid of the sunlight. It worked! The vampire jumps back into the box to escape the light, and you make a break for it through the window. Finally, you reach the edge of the forest and get your first glimpse of the castle. In front of you is a large gate. You push on it. It swings open. As soon as you're in the courtyard, you realize you are not alone. Five other people are there. They're just standing around. No one's talking to each other. You want to know if they've heard anything about the owner of that creepy hut in the woods, so you walk a little closer. But you get a strange feeling deep in your stomach. Something's wrong with these people. You can't believe your eyes, but it looks like some of them are actual zombies. How many zombies are there? You have 10 seconds. Look closely. There are two of them. That guy over there doesn't have an ordinary arm. It's all bones, like a skeleton. And that woman in sunglasses, she's holding someone's eyes in her hand. Are those her eyes? You approach a guy who seems almost normal, but he doesn't look at you. He just keeps staring at the sky. It's a little scary. Okay, time to venture into the castle. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Well, after a few seconds, you look around and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How did you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. (gasps) Oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them, but you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing, only an empty bed. Were you sleeping or was it real? You noticed something. Phew, oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you laid down. Now it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, Guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're Uh all vampires. How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming. You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. 
You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great! It fits! You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh Eh, Still kind of cute, though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle. A werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. 7 to 10 points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back. Tyson was thinking about buying a gym membership. There were only three gyms in the area where he lived. The first one was called Iron Muscles Gym. The second one was called Stronger You Gym. And the third one was called Fit for Life Gym. Now take a look inside all of them. Which one should he choose? Do you see the clean towels wardrobe inside the Stronger You Gym? They don't look clean at all. It's not the best option unless he loves germs. And take a closer look at the running mill inside the Fit for Life gym. It's broken. That's an accident waiting to happen. So he should pick the Iron Muscles gym. Ellie and Ollie were looking for a nice hotel to spend their vacation together with their puppy. After checking out some places online, they brought down their options to three. Take a look at the website of each of them. Which one should they pick? Do you notice the small stock photo sign on the photos of the first hotel's website? That can only mean they are scamming people. Mm. The second hotel seems like a good option since it's a five-star one. But do you see the small sign on the website that says, no pets allowed? Ah. They can't go there with their puppy. So they should stay at the third hotel. 
James and Jonathan went camping in the woods. As they were searching for the perfect place to set their tents, they came across a river that only had one bridge to cross to the other side. However, as soon as they stepped on it, a troll appeared in front of them and said, I'll only let you pass if you answer my riddle. Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. What am I? The answer is time. Hillary was sitting in her hotel room when someone knocked on her door. She opened it and saw a man whom she had never seen before. He said, Oh, I'm sorry. I have made a mistake. I thought this was my room. He then walked back to the elevator. Hillary immediately locked the door after him and called the hotel security. What do you think made her so suspicious? Nobody knocks on their own hotel door, but the man did that. Captain Bluebeard was traveling the sea with his crew. At one time during their voyage, two of his sailors were standing on opposite sides of the ship. One of them was looking west, and the other one was looking east. But at the same time, they could see each other clearly as well. How was that possible? The sailors had their backs against either ends of the ship. Newton and Curie were two history professors from Planet Q. To complete their Planet Earth research, they had to explore a place the Earthlings used to call a school. There, they found a piece of paper with a handwritten number on it, but couldn't come to an agreement about what the number was. Newton was saying it was six, and Curie was saying it was nine. Who was correct? Do you see this teeny tiny dot here? That can only mean the number is nine. So, Curie is right. Yeah. The Foggy Mountains region of the Kingdom of Endolia was occupied by the most vicious dragon. The king called Knight Samuel to go on a quest to defeat it and take all the gold it stole from the people back. Yeah. So, Knight Samuel hopped on his horse and reached the mountains after a long journey. Once the dragon saw him, it said if Knight Samuel knew all three of its riddles correctly, it would leave the mountains as well as all the gold. The first one was, Soft and fragile is my skin, I get my growth in mud. I'm dangerous as much as pretty, for if not careful, I draw blood. What am I? It's a thorn. You're a clever one, Knight Samuel, the dragon said. Here's my second riddle. I am a box that holds keys without locks, yet they can unlock your soul. What am I? The answer is a piano! I have only one riddle left for you. But be very careful. If you can't answer it correctly, this kingdom shall be mine. When you went into the woods, you got me. You hated me, yet you wanted to find me. You went home with me because you couldn't find me. What was it? The answer is a splinter. Annie forgot her computer in her dorm room, but she urgently needed to use one to submit her school paper. Her mom had a laptop in the study room, but it was password protected. However, she was easily able to figure out the password. How did she do it? Take a closer look at the bookcase inside the room. Some of the books have letters instead of their titles on the side labels. This book has the letter A, this one has N, another N here, there's an I on this book's label, and this one has an E. So the password is Annie. Whoa. Professor Guillermo was the headmaster of the Academy for Superheroes. He was also responsible for holding examinations to select new students for the Academy. There were only three students left who successfully made it to the last part of this year's exam. To pass it, they all needed to show Professor Guillermo their special power. The first student's power was going invisible. The second student could make objects fly. And the third student could bend metal with her mind. However, Professor Guillermo realized that one of them was an imposter. Which one is it?
Take a closer look at the object that the second student is levitating. Do you see the small on-off button here? That can only mean it's actually some tech device that can fly on its own. So he is the imposter. Jane was competing at Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? And she was only one question away from the billion dollar prize. The question was, it's true, I bring serenity and hang around the stars, but yet I live in misery, you'll find me behind bars. With thieves and villains I consort, in prison I'll be found, but I would never go to court unless there's more than one. What am I? It's the letter S. Dylan was going to buy a new car. The salesman showed him three options. Which one should he choose? Take a look at the side door of the first car. The paint on here is chipped. It's not wise to get a car that's already damaged. Hmm. The third car's left tire rim is cracked. This one is also a pass. Hmm. So he should get the second car. Oh, yeah. Catherine has four daughters and each of her daughters has a brother. How many children in total does Catherine have? Each daughter has the one and the same brother, so she has five kids. Rachel and Ashley were best friends, but one of them was living in Japan, and the other in the United States. Rachel had purchased a BFF bracelet for Ashley and wanted to mail it to her. However, the only way to make sure the bracelet would be received was to place a lock on the package. Rachel had locks and Ashley had locks, but neither had keys for each other's locks. How can they ensure the bracelet isn't stolen? Rachel should place a lock on the package and send it to Ashley. Ashley then should place one of her locks on the package and send it back to Rachel. Rachel removes her lock and sends the package back to Ashley. Marla goes to the grocery store and buys one dozen eggs. As she's going home, all but three eggs break. How many eggs are left unbroken? The answer is hidden in the question. She has three eggs left. Are you ready for a new detective journey? Then buckle your seatbelts and let's go. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry kitten. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the kitty. She squatted down to attract the cat's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. There was no bridge over the stream and still, the cat wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter and the stream was frozen. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long will it take for the patch to cover half the lake? The patch doubles in size every day. So on the 47th day, the patch will be half the size it is on the 48th day. You are in a place called Bobby's World, and there is only one law there. There is a mirror, but no reflection. There is pizza with cheese, but not with ham. There is pepper, but no salt. There is a door, yet no entrance or exit. What is the law in this strange world? Everything in Bobby's world must contain double letters in its name. Kenneth was hungry. Oh my God. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Hmm. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Look at these two guys. One is big and burly, and the other is short and thin. 
They're in a cafe, drinking identical drinks. The shorter one gulps his drink down in one go and leaves. The other man sips his drink slowly. Then he falls to the floor and is taken to a hospital. Can you explain why it happened if they had the same drinks? The drinks contained poisoned ice cubes. The man who enjoyed his drink gave these ice cubes time to melt and release the poison, while the other man didn't. An Arab sheikh told his two sons that they had to race their camels to a distant city to see who would inherit his fortune. The one whose camel arrived last would win. After wandering aimlessly for days, the brothers asked a wise man for advice. After listening to his opinion, they jumped on the camels and raced as fast as they could to their destination. What did the man tell them? The wise man told them to switch their camels. Look at these two guys. They're wearing similar clothes, yeah. both holding coffee cups, and in general, seem to be perfectly okay. But one of them is a werewolf in disguise. Which one? Look at the guy on the right. There are strange marks on the rim of his cup. Were they left by his fangs? Also, his pupils are a bit elongated. Oh. And there is a paw print design on the plastic bag he's holding. Is it a special store for werewolves? A rich entrepreneur disappeared from his office. Oh the only thing he left behind was a note with the numbers 6, 4, 9, 10, and 11, and a calendar. The police have five suspects. All of them, the businessman's acquaintances. James, Kevin, Carol, Jason, and Laura. Who knows something about the man's disappearance? Oh. Jason. The numbers mean months of the year, and the first letters of these months make up his name, J-A-S-O-N. A furious traveler at the airport claimed the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want you to compensate for what I've lost. After checking the passenger's info, airport security found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase, and now his bag was empty and a bit wet. The whole situation was suspicious. Can you figure out what happened? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted, and the man demanded compensation for the lost belongings. Matthew bought a new smartphone and a phone case. He paid $510. The gadget cost $500 more than the case. How much did Matthew pay for the phone? He paid $505. Last night, on a full moon, several people disappeared in the city. Locals believe that the kidnapper was a werewolf, and you are invited to investigate this case. There are three suspects, Jack, Levi, and Luke, but all of them have alibis. Jack was walking with his girlfriend near the river. Levi was choosing a silver ring for himself in the mall. And Luke, who is a museum guard, had a night shift at work. Which guy is guilty? Jack was walking under a full moon and didn't turn into a werewolf. Levi wasn't afraid to put on silver rings. The werewolf and potential kidnapper is Luke. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. Oh. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of a moving vehicle, but the bag with all his money and documents was left inside. Strangely, Detective Black told Josh that the man had lied to him. Ooh. How did he figure it out? If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Criminals caught three men and locked them in a basement with only one window, high above the floor. Oh, no. The men decided that at least one of them needed to escape and warn the police. The men stood on each other's shoulders, 
but the one on the top still couldn't reach the window. But then they did something, and one of them managed to escape. Can you figure out what they did? The tallest of them climbed on the top. And since, proportionally, this man also had longer arms, he managed to reach the window. You find yourself in a room with no windows. There are three doors leading out of the room. Suddenly, a big screen on the wall lights up. You read, Behind each of these doors, there is some danger. The first door leads to a scorching hot desert. Several steps, and the sun will burn you. Behind the second door, there is a hungry alligator that hasn't eaten for a year. And the third door hides a pool with icy water. To get to freedom, you'll have to swim across it. Which door should you choose to survive? Alligators can indeed go without food for up to three years, which means that the creature behind the second door is hungry and dangerous. Freezing water can cause cold shock in an unprepared swimmer. That's why you should choose the first door. You just need to wait for the sun to go down and walk through the desert. Oh, yes. James came to a cafe to drink coffee. Mm. But when a waitress brought him a cup, the man found a fly in his drink. He called the waitress and told her to bring him another coffee. She did, but when James took a sip from his cup, he got really angry and asked to call a manager. He complained that the waitress had brought him the same coffee. How did he understand it? The new coffee was already sweet because James had already put sugar in his first cup before finding the fly. <laughs> 